of his people tonight. Oh, come on and bless the Lord. There's someone who needs to lean on the everlasting arms of God. And I came to let you know, you might be, there's some of you, you're not all the way out yet. And you need to lean. Ah, you know, the crutch is going to help you to come out tonight. Holding on to an object isn't going to keep you up tonight. You're going to have to lean on him. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm looking for some praises in the house. I'm looking for some faithful praises who will lift up a praise unto the most high God. He deserves the glory. We say hallelujah. The highest praise. Oh, honor him tonight. Give him a wave offering in the house. Give him a sheep offering. Hallelujah. Open up your mouth and perfect the praises of the most high God. With the fruit of my lips, I shall praise thee. From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God Almighty. And I've got to learn how to lean on you. You may be seated. I'm looking for someone tonight who understands what it means to be broken. He didn't send me for everybody tonight. But he sent me for a people who are broken. A people who understand that they're, they're being rejected or dejected. The Statue of Liberty says, send me your poor. Send me your weak. Send me those that are broken. And I came to let you know that there is a God that is here tonight, that whatever your situation is, he's here to put his name on it. I've been broken. I've been broken to pieces. Oh, but there is a God who has the bomb of Gilead who said, I kill and I make alive tonight. Oh, bless his name in this place. He's not ashamed to call you his children. Don't be ashamed tonight to worship him in spirit and in truth. I wish somebody would get up right now out of their seat. Somebody who's not ashamed of his holy name. He's not ashamed of you. And you're not ashamed to worship him. I feel the atmosphere shifting in this place. I feel someone breaking through. I feel a praise coming on to the most high God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. I've got to learn to lean in these times. In times like these, I've got to learn how to trust in him. I got to learn to have my confidence in nothing else but in him. Hallelujah. You may be seated. We give honor to our wonderful, marvelous, awesome, man of God. I thank God for you, Bishop. I love you, my daddy. I love him. God has used this man mightily to shift me. Hallelujah. And in my first lady's absence, we pray for her tonight that her heart be settled that she be in peace where she is tonight. And my pastor's absent also. We bless the Lord for our pastor who feed us with good things that our youth is renewed. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. I give honor 
to all of those in their rightful places, the elders, both those who are here tonight and those who are absent, the head missionary, head evangelist, the mothers of the church, the backbone of the church, the mothers, everyone, the foot soldiers, each and every one of you in your respectful places. And as I always say, Faith United, I love you because you first love me. You tolerate me. And I am so grateful for that. And it's not in every atmosphere that you go that you're going to be tolerated. So I thank God for the, your leader's love because he's taught you to love well. If you would, go with me to Isaiah the ch chapter 55. And as you are looking for that, let me just set the atmosphere just a little bit. I came today to bring you a word from the bosom of the Lord because perilous time is here. We can't wait until the doctor gives us a report to learn to lean. We can't wait until there's no money for groceries to learn to lean. We can't wait until the car has been repoed and the house is now being, there's being made a demand to take away the house before we learn to lean. For the just shall live by faith. And we've been commanded to seek ye first the kingdom of God. That is our primary duty to seek first the kingdom of God and in all his righteousness. And God said all these things, all these cares, all these weights uh, that we carry that we're so uh, vexated with, uh, that we're troubled all about us with. He said all these things shall be added uh, unto you. I want you to know tonight that he's the one who's doing the multiplication and the addition. It is he who's doing all the adding. It's not by our labor per se. And I know you're in Isaiah now, so let me go ahead with the word. It says, Isaiah 55, verse 1, Ho, everyone that thirsteth cometh ye to the waters. And he that had no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread? And your labor for that which is does not satisfy. Hearken diligently unto me, therefore, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Ah, uh, you see, uh, the word says, everyone that thirsts it, see those are the people that I came for tonight, uh, those who are thirsty. There is a qualification, and, and it's not by your experience, uh, or education, but the qualification tonight and, and those that I came to see about tonight are those that are thirsty. Your mouth is harsh. Your mouth might even be dry. Your ground is dry. You might not have an open heaven over you. See, I'm not, I don't want to declare anything over anyone that that isn't your situation. Because if you're doing good, just Get in here with us for a little while. Come on and just celebrate with us while we get ours. But I came for someone who says, I had enough. I'm sick of tired of being sick and tired. And it's time for my breakthrough. Because the word of God said he's looking for someone is who is Thirsty. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. 
thirsty for what, woman of God? See, a drink. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. It's, uh, so everyone that thirsts it, come, come ye to the waters. See, the waters, they quench your thirst. The waters, when you're dipped in the waters, when you come back up, you're refreshed. When you come back up, you're clean. See, there is a river of God that make glad the city of God. And I need to be dipped tonight. There's someone else that, I, like I said, you're on your way out. But you're not all the way there yet. And you just need a little bit of water to refresh your soul. To make you new again. That water tonight is the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah to the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost is here to make some changes in your life. Oh, you can welcome him tonight. He said, come. Come to the waters. There's so many things that try to hinder us as we're trying to get where we're trying to get. There are barriers. There are hindrances. There are people who don't want to see you get past them. Oh, but he's saying, come. The master is bidding you to come tonight. Oh, he's calling out, come. Don't tell me I don't have any money. I can't come and purchase. I can't bring changes in my life tonight because my money is funny. My bills are stacked up high and trouble is in my way. And I'm just stuck like Chuck right now. I can't move forward for going backwards. Oh, that's who I came for tonight. Oh, that's who I came for tonight. To get you unstuck. You're going to be activated. You're going to move forward. I declare it right now in the spirit. When you have money, you can buy milk. Because he called us to a land that's flowing with milk and honey. He brought you all the way out to bring you into a land that's flowing with milk and honey. The honey is for to satisfy your taste. The milk is the stable food. As long as there's milk and there's water and there's honey in the house, Everything's going to be all right. Buy and eat. Taste and see that God is good. Buy, eat. Don't come in and stand up and refuse to sit at the banqueting table where he's been over you is love, where he's put out a spread before you tonight. Oh, I know what you're talking about. You've heard so many words of prosperity. You've heard so many things, and yet you haven't come into it yet, Sister Brenda. But I came to let someone know tonight because the Lord has revealed it unto me. And I pray tonight that your eyes will be flooded with a revelation of the truth and the knowledge and the wisdom that is in Christ Jesus. He did not die only for salvation. He died that you might come in. We are waiting to use currency to purchase and to buy. Our palates will go unsatisfied because God's currency is faith. God's way we've been translated into a different kingdom. And because we don't have this knowledge, because we don't have this wisdom, what my people, he says, they perish for lack of knowledge. But I came tonight 
light to enlighten your eyes to cause your heart to get a hold of this truth. Do you hear what the unjust judge says? He says, at least she come and she weary me with her coming. That I might as well just go ahead and give her what she wants. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. God is talking to somebody tonight. He is an unjust judge. Have that understanding. He said, did you hear what he said? My father who is in heaven, he is a good father. If you keep coming, keep knocking, the door shall be open. The way shall be made straight. Hallelujah. He said right before that, the just shall live by faith. That's how we ought to live. It's not by currency. You know, it's a good thing to work. For it is the Lord our God who gives us the power to get wealth. But there comes a time. There comes some things in your life. If you can't get a hold of faith, you'll be stuck for a long time. You'll be broken for a long time. You won't be able to dip into healing waters. You won't be able to drink wine. His way is not our way. But my thoughts, he says in verse 8, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. For, for as the heavens are higher, my ways are higher. So we got to get our minds elevated. We have to tune into the mind of God. Higher than the earth. So are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we are a people. Our, our wants are innumerable. Our cares are innumerable. Just when you think you have the mind of God and the thought of God as you're trying to figure things out, uh, another a, a, another piece of information come in and just throws up the whole equation. We have got to become the people who says, if God doesn't do it, it's not going to get done. Otherwise, we will never be left at ease long enough to seek first the kingdom of God. All the labor is vexation of spirit. All our labor. We labor so we can leave for the next man. And who know it if this man shall be a fool. So instead of asking tonight, what am I going to do about my sickness? What am I going to do about my situation? What am I going to do about these bills? What am I going to do about these children? What am I going to do? God, get out of the way and let God do it. Let God do it. Let God do it. God is able to cause all things to abound to you. I need to do a heart check right now. I need to check to see if you're getting what I'm talking about. If the spirit of God, the revelator, is important unto you. Truth, light, life. I need, I need someone to be, to be activated. 
someone to get unstuck, someone to get healed, someone to get moving again, someone to hope again, faith, hope, and love, these three abide, without faith it is impossible to please God. need some cooling waters. God is calling us not only to be translated into the marvelous light, into that wonderful kingdom, but we have so many mindsets that no one has come and told us that's not kingdom thinking, that's thinking thinking. No one's told us that. So here we are. I give you this illustration. We got one hose connected right here. That's the world hose. I need to go to work. I need money. I have all this stuff I got to do. The world hose. And then we got another hose connected over here. That's the God hose. You know, whatever the world can do, we'll We'll tap into God. But I came to let you know tonight, you got that, sister. I came to let you know tonight, he's wanting us to wean us off of that second hose. He wants to wean us. You have to consider Daniel. You have to consider Joseph. You have to consider the patriarchs, the Big names of the faith. They didn't have anything more than you have. But you see, Moses was able to see the invisible God with his bare eyes because of his faith. Noah was able to leave his family. You know how hard it is to leave your family, to leave your kindred, to leave what is comfortable. You know how hard that is. He went into a place that he didn't know. He wandered looking for a place that whose ruler was God. You know, when God came to Sarah, Sarah laughed. But in the process of time, faith came. Faith showed up because in her old age, by faith, she received strength to get birth. And I pray tonight by the Holy Spirit, before you get up out of this place, you receive faith by faith. And there's so many more that we can name. Noah. He was moved by fear, and he went and he built the ark that God commanded him to build. Out of fear, sheer fear, he had faith to build this tremendous vessel by faith. And by so, he condemned each and every one of us. He condemned the world. Every one of us who won't have the faith of Noah, who won't have the faith of Moses, who won't have the faith of Sarah, and we won't bring forth. We can't trust God. We can't obey God. We don't have no confidence in God. God's currency is faith. Whatever you need, he said to ask, pray, entreat him. And if it ain't happening fast enough, he said himself, Jesus said, did you hear what the unjust judge said? So what does that tell us? God can get weary with us, with us keep nagging him that he'll do it for us. If we don't learn to lean on the everlasting arm of God. Because the word of God said, curse is the man that trusts in flesh and makes flesh his arm. Some trust in chariots. Some
some trust in other gods, but we will trust in the name of our God. You know, and as Bishop was saying uh, during Sunday school on Sunday, he said that faith is something you can see. I came to tell you, not only can you see it, you can hear it. Because when you tell me, I'm going to do that, the Lord is with me. Or you tell me, no way on earth. It can be heard. It can be seen. It can be touched. Because Hebrew 11 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's my evidence of things that I do not yet see. I need someone because I know the Holy Ghost is talking to you. You put some things to the side. Some things have gone dead. Some have fallen asleep. And the Holy Ghost is saying, I dare you tonight to pick it up again. And have the faith of God to walk it out. And just as my sister saying, he'll bring you out. By faith. You know, it's an incredible thing for Moses to see the invisible God by faith. How is that possible? Everything that we can is dream of. If we're going to live according to the word of God, it's going to have to be done. By faith. So, I say to you today, God wants his people to do great exploits. And I'm not just talking to those who have a maturity in Christianity. I'm talking to every person under the sound of my voice. I believe there is, by my faith, I believe the Spirit of God is stirring up in this place. And anyone who wants something and who will run into that water and dip into that water that he's talking about, anyone who will drink the water tonight will come up on top. Your needs will be met. You will be shifted in the Spirit. If I had anyone who would believe with me tonight, I'm only looking for a few good, faithful saints tonight. Everybody don't want to be shifted. Some people are happy. I'm looking for the hungry, the thirsty, the broken, the dejected and rejected. That's who I'm looking for tonight. I'm looking for the Holy Ghost to come in here to enlighten your hearts and your mind. I'm looking for your life to be shift in the spirit. There's some preaching. When you finish hearing the preaching, there's something that is birthed in your spirit, and you got to get up, and you got to do something with it. It won't let you sleep unless you do something with it. I want you to place it. You got to have faith in yourself. I want you to place your hand on your heart. And I want you to be, speak to the spirit of God concerning your needs tonight. Speak to the spirit because he is the one who's bidding you to come tonight. He said you're qualified. He said you're mine. I'm not ashamed to call you mine. Speak to the spirit of God and believe when you pray that you receive whatsoever you believe. If you will continue believing and won't leave it alone, it will remain alive in your spirit. And the spirit of God should bring it to pass. There's some of you in here tonight. I believe, I, I know there is. 
an anointing in my life to activate. And how do I know this? Because it was the same anointing that activated me and ushered me into the ministry. Many, many years ago when I did street ministry at the malls, you know, the Spirit of God would be moving and doing different things. I, I have to tell you, on the street corner, the Spirit of God, the people who are not so uh, familiar with re religious routines and things, they're so eager to receive from God. And the Spirit of God moves mightily on street corners. But there came to me, I'll never forget this little girl. Her mother was in a certain situation, couldn't feed them, no lights in the house, no food, no this, no that. When you find someone like that, what do you offer them? If you don't have living waters, if you don't have something that's going to shift them and move them and activate them and move them from one level of glory to another, you're just talking a good game. And that time with that little girl, I went to a seminar. It was like a three-day or four-day convocation. And the Spirit of God, through some very powerful people through that whole occasion, he allowed me to be activated. And I had been able to go to the street corners, activate and people in their gifts of tongue, activate them uh, spiritually, just, and tonight is enough of what I can do. I'm just speaking about what the Spirit of God can uses me for. Tonight, if you feel stuck and you just need a little push, if your dreams have gone dormant, if you are in a job that seems to be going nowhere, if you are in a relationship, I met a woman this uh, yesterday, I believe, who needed this water. There are some people that are in such terrible situation and circumstances, 14 years of marriage to an alcoholic who is a terrorist terrorizes her and her biggest fear is keeping the car keys away from him so he doesn't take his own life that's what love will do but if you're here tonight and you need this water and you're ready to eat you're ready to buy the things that God the whole grace has already purchased for you because the salvation packet, as Pastor often says, it's a benefit package. It came with all things. And when we have this understanding that it's not about money, God knew that this system operates with money. He knew that. When he said that he gives us all everything richly to enjoy. Where is it? Everything. The cattle's on a thousand hill belongs to him. And he has given it all to the children of men. So, what I'm saying tonight, we've got to make this mind shift. I don't want you to believe God for little things. You have some things, some of you, God has called you to do certain things and prayer after prayer. One good word after another, and you haven't been able to do it. Sometimes it takes the heat to make you throw your hands up and give up and say, okay, God, I'll finally do what you tell me to do. Sometimes it takes persecution. Sometimes it takes being threatened to go, being thrown into jail. Sometimes it takes somebody saying they're going to take everything you have. Sometimes it takes being thrown into jail or prison before we'll finally say to God, okay, I give up. I'm ready to come now. Those are the people that I'm looking for tonight.
tonight, you know there's a calling on your life and you can't seem to do what God has told you to do. If that's you tonight, come on up. I'm going to pray for you. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Trust.